Sesu Nefiltratois. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Another one from the Baltic States and this is the Sesu Nefiltra Taste. Now this is one of the beers that I got from the supermarket around the corner and it's a range of beers that they've got in there. How they've ended up from I don't know but they've got some Lithuanian beers, some Latvian beers. I've never come across these before and I thought it only right that I should get them and review them. So far it's been pretty disappointing but I was thinking about this the other night. I reviewed three, I think it was last night, and the, there was a Baltica beer in there as well. That went down the sink, that was terrible stuff. And the other two were beers from Lithuania which really weren't that good. And I thought, and I made this statement that beer further east of Hungary is not good at all and I've sort of regretted that and I thought I was thinking about it last night and I thought well I'm buying what is probably the most popular beer in the world so for example if we bought beer in the UK that was made by a macro brewer from an from another country, we probably wouldn't be getting the best beer that the country has to offer. So that was a bit of a, I don't know, a, a sweeping statement that shouldn't have really been made. So I do sort of apologize for that because I, I don't doubt there are potentially good brewers in Lithuania. And I'd imagine there's some good craft brewers. In fact, thinking about it now, I think I've actually had a beer from Lithuania, craft brewed beer from Lithuania. I think it was a goes or something. And it was shit. <laughs> so what does that tell you? No, I, I, I'm convinced there must be. Surely a whole country cannot go without producing at least one good beer. Surely not. Anyway, I'll make it my mission to find out. Anyway, this one is from Latvia. Different country but a Baltic state nonetheless. And this, believe it or not, this Sesu Alus, as they are known, is the oldest brewer, not only in Latvia, not only in all of the Baltic states, but in it, it's the oldest in all of the Nordic countries as well, which is some claim. Now, whether that translates well into the beer or not, I don't know. But what I will say is this is the most popular brewer in Latvia. It produces 64% of the country's beer. So you can imagine what sort of scale it's being produced on there. Latvia obviously isn't as big a country as some of the other European countries. It's relatively small, in fact. But nevertheless, it's the most popular beer there. That could be either one of two things. It could be that it's a really good beer or that the beer is shit and the best is of, this is the best of a bad bunch. I don't know, I'm not going to make that claim until I actually taste the stuff. But this is an unfiltered and unpasteurised beer. It's can conditioned according to the website, so it should be a little bit more interesting than some of the Lithuanian stuff that I drank last night, which quite frankly, it just lacked any character whatsoever. Marston's would have been proud of it. it there was no aroma, no real flavour, and to be honest, I was left very underwhelmed by it. But as I say, this is can condition, so it's a little bit more interesting. But what I tell you what I do like about the beers from the Baltic States is they actually give you a fucking pint in the can. This is 568 mil, and that equates to a full imperial pint, which I think is great. And the fact that it's unfiltered, unpasteurized, relatively cheap, I thought, why not give it a go? So here we are. And as I say, this is the oldest brewer in Latvia and in all of the Nordic states, so it's got a good pedigree. So let's investigate the beer and see what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it is an unfiltered lager. On a par with the equivalent of a Keller beer, a Zwickel beer, whatever you want to call it. It is can conditioned, it does contain <clears throat> does contain yeast or um, suspended yeast, so it is still fermenting in the can. It's 5.4% and it's 500 ml. What I do like about these beers, and it was the same on the Lithuanian beers as well, they put like a, a tin foil cover on the can. Now, I'm assuming this isn't just for decoration because, and I mentioned this in the other ones as well, recently there was a, I'll just take it off first, there it is, it's plain, but they put it on there. Recently there was a study or documentary that said beer that's stored in cellars and various other places where there is vermin, they will run across the top and deposit droppings and urine and stuff, which can be potentially fatal. Now, if it's rats, that's really serious. Rat urine contains Veal's disease, and if you've never heard of Veal's disease, it's pretty lethal. If you've ever worked in sewerage or in the water industry, you know, re treating water and stuff like that, then you get inoculated for Veal's disease because it is a killer. And of course, mice droppings as well, and rice, mice urine is pretty unpleasant as well and you really don't want to be ingesting that by drinking it out of a can so that's a nice little touch i do like that other brewers could take no but of course other brewers wouldn't do it because it would be too expensive but there you go so what have we got on the can a load of cyrillic writing i will say that and there's all sorts of gobbledygook written on this and they don't make it easy to understand i think that must be israeli it, it looks like Hebrew. It's, that to me looks like Hebrew that they've put on there. And yeah, I imagine this is for export. Well, it is for export. Contains barley malt, possible sediment. Store at plus two degrees. Best before base produce. What is the. Uh, uh, 3rd of the 12th, 21, right, okay. Whether that's the case or not, don't know because it's got live sediment, so it's still conditioning in the can. And that's about it, really. That's all I can tell you. So let's stop guessing and let's get this open. Right. Unfiltered and unpasteurised. Hmm. There is a bit of an, uh, an aroma to it. Wow, that's dark. That is very dark for a lager. That is the sort of colour I would expect from a, a Bohemian or Czech Pilsner. That deep amber orange colour. In fact, it does look a bit like a wheat beer. There is an aroma to it, but I'm not sure whether that's just the sulphur that's built up in there. It's quite grainy. And grassy. Slightly more interesting than the other stuff that I tried from Lithuania. And there it is, that's the whole lot in the glass. Half finger, foamy white head orange colour as I say looks almost like a German Weizen. It's like an orangey cloudy orangey yellow colour. And yeah it does contain what I perceive to be a quite a malty aroma. Interesting it's got a little bit more going for it than the Lithuanian stuff as I said. Let's see what it's saying in its taste. Bottoms up. That actually isn't too bad. It's not bad at all. 
There's a nice finish on it. Quite bready and doughy. And in a blindfold test, I would say that was a macro brewed Zwickel or Calabria. And it isn't bad. It's definitely got some Czech characteristics to it. There's that lovely malty type taste that you get on good Czech Pilsners. However, there isn't the hop bitterness, you know, the slight astringent hop bitterness that you get on the palate with the Czech Pilsner. Um, not bad so far. Yeah, I'm quite liking this. <clears throat> Relatively sweet compared to a lot of German Calabiers. And I'm gonna compare this to a Calabier because it's an unfiltered, bottom fermented type unfiltered lager. And it's got that breadiness that you get on the finish of some good German Calabiers, but it hasn't got the slight sourness from the yeast, which for me is characteristic of Calabria, and it makes it a little bit more interesting for me. But for the money, and I'll, I'll tell you what it cost me a bit later on, for the money, this isn't too bad at all, and it's certainly the best one I've tried out of all the, the Baltic ones so far. Little slight metallic taste on this. Not much, but it's there. I'm just wondering whether it's something to do with either the can or the, the brewing process. However, I will say this brewery has got platinum status, status I should say, for the environmental credentials that it produces, so, or that it possesses, sorry. But it's, uh, this isn't bad, and I'm just looking at it, you can't really see it. There's still a bit of daylight out there, but I can see all the suspended yeast just floating to the bottom on this, and the carbonation is just pushing it around. And that's translating to the flavour. And it isn't bad. Don't get me wrong, the flavours aren't big on the palate. The finish is relatively big and it's quite clean drinking and I would have no qualms about drinking this on a warm summer's day and so far this is I think this is going to be my go-to beer from this new place around the corner now I haven't checked out their real ale section yet I didn't have much time I had to quickly nip in and nip out but this is definitely the best one from the Baltic states that they've got in that range so far. So, it isn't doing too bad. So, what's the verdict on Sesu Nefiltrates? It's not bad at all. It's got a little bit of Bohemian Czech Pilsner style character to it in the malts but it's also got the German Keller beer drinkability although it does lack the very slight sourness that you do get with certain German Keller beers but I'll tell you what it is not bad it's certainly not the worst beer I've tried in the world no unpleasantness in that relatively cheap it cost me £2.30 something for a can and that is a pint can and it goes down very nicely indeed. I am drinking this cold, it has come out of the fridge. It was really cold in that fridge that they've got round the corner. My fridge isn't that cold because sometimes I put other beers that I don't want to drink too cold because I'm gonna not get all the flavors if it's too cold. But I'll tell you what, this isn't bad at all. There's just a slight amount of malty finish on it, but it, it's very drinkable. 
goes down quite nicely. Good mouthfeel as well. And yeah, I quite like it. I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of 10. And I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to get hold of this, but it's available in the supermarket around the corner is one of them premier jobs, premier supermarket jobs. I'm not sure whether it's just they're on the ball and they know what beers or they've been offered these at quite a cheap rate. But this one isn't bad. Certainly the best one out of all the others I've tried so far. And I think seven and a half is a, a worthy mark for it. I wouldn't get it any more. It just doesn't stand out that much. I think the fact that it's unfiltered and it is unfilled. You can see the suspended yeast in it getting thrown around by the carbonation and it's not bad at all. So seven and a half out of 10, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.